Dishnozzletoff by Thomas Shanklin, read by the author. A story about a pig that came to visit one evening in October. It was a cold and rainy afternoon. Oink, oink, oink. That got my attention. Dishnozzletoff. Something walked by as I looked through the door. Oink, oink, grunt, grunt, slurp. Oink, 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 Gishnazatov. Blue eyes looked up at me. I walked to the edge of the deck. Oink, slurp, oink. Hmm, slurp, Gishnazal, this visitor who had come out from my woods on this rainy day. What has brought you here, I asked. Where did you come from? Oink. Oink, grunt, slurp, my visitor, Gishnazel, obviously more interested in his discovery. I took a closer look at my Gishnazeling friend. Oink, oink, good, wild, mean, blueberry pie, slurp, he grunted. It's not too often one finds such a treat in the woods, I commented. Yum, Gishnazel, he continued as he finished off the treat. Well... Where did you come from, I asked. Oink, where do you think? Grunted Gishnazel. From the great sty in the sky? I've come by and by. Just dropped in to say hi. Big blue eyes analyzed me. Well, isn't that something? A pig in my yard in the middle of nowhere now. Now what do I do? Oink, oink, geschnozzle, said my visitor. The blueberry pie was good for starters. The little porker continued. Got any more treats for me to eat? While he wiped his schnozzle after the last geschnozzle, he squinted his eyes with anticipated delight. An apple or two, would that do? I'll look in the fridge where I might find a few. I went in search for what a geschnozzle pig might like. I mumbled to myself, Great, now I'm talking to a pig tonight. He waited outside with bated breath, I guess. I didn't get close enough to put that to the test. What can I do with a pig? I can't put him to death. And what do you feed a pig? They don't always go for the best. Anything, I guess. Gishnazeltoff, I said, as I tossed him the apple I'd found. I wasn't sure what kind of pig he was. It seemed good to offer him a toast with the treat I'd found. Gishnazeltoff, he grunted back. Oink, oink, grunt, grunt, said Gishnazel. That apple was good. What else do you have? As he stared at me from the safety of the wet grass. How about some of this real German pumpernickel bread? Are you a German pig? I asked, as I tossed him a few slices. Geschnozzle ambled over. Pigs do amble, you know. A sniff or two later. Hmm, oink, oink, grunt, grunt. He liked the bread. Must be a German pig. How about some of these Pepperidge Farm bread rounds? Are you on a diet? Would you like this? Another amble, another Geschnozzle. And that bread was gone, too. He liked. Must be an eclectic pig. How about another apple, I asked, as he rooted around for something else as tasty as the blueberry pie. Oink, oink, mmm, good, Gishnazel grunted. And how about those frozen strawberries you have in the fridge? I'd like those, too. I shook my head. Am I hearing things? Now the pig is talking to me. Now the pig has ESP. He knows what I have in my fridge. I must have spent too much time alone in the woods. I got the strawberries and threw them out on the grass. It took a minute, but Kishnazel finally found them, one by one. Oink, oink, grunt, grunt, slurp, mmm, good. What else do you have, asked Kishnazel Toff. Some half-sour kosher pickles? Kishnazel took his time finding the pickle. Grumph, commented Kishnazel. Huh, I commented back with my hands on my hips. Well be that way. Must not be a kosher pig. 
Last time I looked, the pickle was still out on the lawn. It was getting dark. The schnozzle was getting awfully friendly. He was no wild boar, nor was he a boar. Then he was gone. As night fell, I wondered about my new friend. Had he gone home to sty, or had he gone under my deck to stay? Sleep came, fitful sleep. I wondered about my pig. My pig? He's not my pig. Morning came. The sun arose and Geschnozzle did too. Huh, <laughs> must have bettered down for the night. He decided to stay. I bent down on my haunches to get closer look. Geschnozzle sidled all ready to schnoozle his wet nose against my knee. Here, have an apple, I offered. Geschnozzle oinked it down, and another, and another. You're getting way too friendly, I grunted. Huh, oink, oink, grunt, retorted Geschnozzle. Good place to sty. He's a southern pig. Has a southern accent, I thought. Good food, nice friend. You can't stay here, I grunted back in pig talk. Here, have another apple while I figure out what to do with you. Grunt, grunt, he replied. I understood. Oh, great. Now I'm starting to understand. He wants his back scratched. I obliged. Don't get used to it, though, I warned. You're going to find a new home, or at least another sty. Who are you, anyway, I asked. Harold, Geschnozzle replied. Well, Harold, I said, you may think this is your sty, but I'm calling 911 the sheriff, and post a pick of your wet snout. I'll find you a sty. No one would oblige. His blue magnetic eyes, though, caught all by surprise. A couple appeared to give him a new sty. With cage at the ready and apples galore, Geschnozzle named Harold was enticed through their door. With a squeal and a grunt, Geschnozzle and an oink, the apple enticed him to go with them, all right. I bid him goodbye and wished him a long, baconless life. It was then I wondered why I had been visited that night. This pig, named Geschnozzle, really named Harold, had come Geschnozzled into my life. I had befriended a pig, or had the pig befriended me. So no matter who comes calling, keep your hearts and doors open wide for you never know who's coming to visit each day. Just welcome and love them right now, before they go on their way. Gishnozzletoff, Harold. A book about the day that a pig named Gishnozzletoff, really named Harold, came to visit. The book is available on Amazon.com, or you may contact me directly. May you have a Gishnozzletoff day.